Welcome back here on the first team. I'm Joe Delio, joined by Ryan Roberts. We're doing our next position ranking show here during our summer scouting series for the 2024 NFL draft. We've already done a number of position groups, so if you've missed out on those, make sure you go and check those out. But today, we're doing interior offensive line. Make sure you also go check out that uh, Zach Zinter and Cooper BB scouting report episode that we did. A lot of great stuff there, a lot of in depth analysis on those two particular players. And then, of course, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any of our upcoming content. So Ryan, I got to say this guard class was was really I can't say underwhelming because <laughs> my expectations were pretty middling, but it was very just disappointing. Cuz I've okay. got like a couple guys at the top. I think there's one guy that you watched that you really liked that I didn't get to. Uh -huh. And I actually watched 10 guys. Like I watched a lot of guys but I feel like there's one that I am not going to have watched because we were texting about some of these names and mm -hmm. you had said that you thought you found your number one guard. I have a couple guys that can play other positions too that I'm kind of debating if I if I made the right decision keeping them uh, at guard. But this is, this is probably the least confident I've ever been about any of my position rankings uh, on the entirety of the show. I have never felt more uneasy about sharing a list. Joe, Joe, you're not supposed to tell people that, man. You're supposed to pretend like you're super confident all the time. Come on. I normally am I'm super confident. I'm I'm just I, I, I just got to be real. But what did, what did you think I, about the class? I, I would say this, Joe. I think that there is some players that bring a really good floor to this class. So I think that there's actually depth in this class as far as guys that I think will at least be good backups potentially in the NFL level. There is one player that I watched, though. You are correct. That I think... I might be higher on than a lot of people, but that's okay because okay. you always find your guys and we'll be there. So I think there's a decent floor in this class. I don't think there's a ton of guys that like get me super juiced up as far as what the upside of them is, except for one player mm -hmm. that is. Before we continue on with this video, I just want to tell you folks about an exciting new partnership that we have with this channel with Underdog Fantasy. Ever since I joined, I've been having so much fun. There are so many different exciting games that make watching games during the offseason more exciting. I'm not the biggest basketball fan, but it has made it way more entertaining since I found Underdog Fantasy. And my favorite game to play so far, which I think you should try out, is Pick'em. It is so easy to play. Just pick higher or lower on your favorite player's stats, and you can win up to 20 times your money in a single night. Underdog keeps it simple. With their easy-to-use website and mobile apps, pick between two and five players to fill out your Pick'em slip get every pick right, and take home some cold, hard cash. Use code HACK, H-A-C-K, HACK, like the name of this channel. Use code HACK to get your first deposit doubled up to $100 by Underdog. Go sign up. You won't regret it. You're going to have a blast. Check out Underdog Fantasy. I also want to tell you folks about our other reoccurring sponsor that we have on this channel, that being Bet Online. BetOnline.ag, which has all the updated odds, news, and anything for sports betting. It's my go-to source for when I want to be betting specifically on games. I love betting on college basketball or the NBA, uh, especially, again, during the offseason. Always looking for more fun ways to be uh, focused in on some of these other sports. It's BetOnline.ag and use promo code BELIEVE50. It's promo code BELIEVE50 to get 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. BetOnline, where the game starts. All right, I'm going to start us off here with Donovan Jackson from Ohio State is my number five player. Okay. He stuck his way on here. Um, I think he's a fine football player. I thought that he wasn't going to make the list. And had I, uh, just a disclaimer, I decided to move Bo Limmer to center because I was listening to SEC Media Day and it's confirmed that he's moving to center. It's like, okay, I'm I told you that. Wanna... I told you that. Yeah. I yeah. know you said it, but then yeah. hearing Sam Pittman say it, I'm like, okay, this is going to be a center prospect. I'm going to look like a hack. Well, I, I, mean, I mean, you could still project him to guard if you like him there better, though. I mean, you could still do I that. think he can play either, and I, I, I think okay. he pl can play both, but he's realistically, I feel like, more of a center prospect. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, one of the other guys we're going to get to in a little bit is probably a center prospect too, but I kept him off of principle. Uh, Donovan Jackson, though, yep. at six foot four, 320 pounds, I think he is a, a really good athlete. He is a nice athlete. I thought he moved really well. I thought that in space he was a guy that can get to the next level effectively. You ask him to pull, he's going to move pretty well. I think where he places for me and my grade on him is not super exciting. I think he's more of an early to mid 
uh, day three pick, probably closer to that mid day three pick range because of a, just a general lacking of power. I feel as though that there are a lot of instances on film in, in the Georgia game is, is really, I think where he was exposed because th- that's the best talent he saw all season. And that's sure. NFL talent that he's going to have to face when he gets to the next level. He was, was really pushed around a lot and I, I couldn't really totally buy in. I think he needs to add some more strength to his, to his profile. Not sure if I'm, I'm totally in love with his just general mentality for the position but I think that with his athleticism, uh, there is some possibility for him to possibly start. But I see him more as a backup. So I mean, I, I'm just I'm going to be a little bit higher on Donovan Jackson than you, but like okay. not a ton higher. I mean, I think that when we talked about him on the show, I think our grades are actually sort of similar, and I have him as my number three offensive guard in this class. So it's not like I'm saying like okay. this is the number one offensive guard and then. I think that there is upside with Donovan Jackson because I think the tough part about summer is that there is a very tough balance at times of who the player is now and what the player can become. Because we're talking about a kid that, again, was only a sophomore last year and a first-year starter for the University of Ohio State. Ohio State University. Is the University of Ohio State? I always miss that one. I don't know. OSU. OSU. Ohio State University then. I think that he has requisite traits across the board to get excited about. I actually think he's a very explosive athlete. I think he moves yeah. well. I think yeah. his power profile is developing. I would agree with you. It's not there yet. I, I think we agree there. But I also think that the game just kind of moves fast for him right now. And I think that there is there is a maturation that's going right. to happen from a – the game's going to slow down for Donovan Jackson, I think. And I think it could slow down this year. So I think that he's a player that could be higher on my list. I think he's a player that could be higher on your list. I just don't think we've seen the best of Donovan Jackson. Again, we're talking about a first-year starter was probably 20 years old last year, right? And we're going to have – I mean, I'm going to talk about at least a couple guys that are probably 23 years old already at this point. So they're more developed football players. So I think there's upside to Donovan Jackson. He was my number three player on the list. Just a final added thought. Here's my one thing yep. I, I, th- I think I'd like to highlight. When I, when I watch guards, one of the most important things for me is – like your angles can be sloppy and the game could be moving too fast for you. I totally agree with that. And I I'd like to find that upside, but if I don't see reps on tape where you're just like really bullying guys, it's hard for me to buy in because I, I, I really value guards who have just a ton of power and can do some serious damage. I didn't get enough displacing from Donovan Jackson. Uh, but who was your, who's your number five? Well, if you want displacing Joe, cause I don't know if you got to this young man, but Tate Ratledge, who plays offensive guard out of Georgia, six mm. foot six, 315 pounds. There's no way this kid's only 315 pounds. Zero, zero percent chance, man. This is, you remember Ben Cleveland that played at Georgia a yes. couple years ago? He's Grown a man. similar body type, not quite as big as Ben was like 355 pounds at some points in his, his Georgia career. He, but this is a massive young man. He's got impressive grip strength. He actually does take good angles to the second level. I think he's a pretty easy mover linearly. I think he's a little bit high-legged, a little bit heavy-footed because he's just such a massive kid. So, like, this isn't going to be an outside zone heavy type of guard. This is going to be more of an inside zone, gap power style offensive guard. But I really liked the displacement power. I like the angles to the second level. And I think that he is a guy that understands hand combat and it has a really nice baseline as a gap power inside zone guard at the next level. So right now I think he is a wild card to even enter the class because he's only going to be a junior this year. So he might more Mm. be a 2025 kid, but he is draft eligible. He is a multi-year starter now coming into this year at the University of Georgia. Where's number 69 and he's a massive human being for the University of Georgia. So I like Tate Radledge. He narrowly edged out a couple Kids that I kind of liked, you know, the Christian Haynes is of the world from UConn and Isaiah oh. Adams from Illinois and Keaton Bills was a guy from Utah that I watched that I actually kind of liked a little bit. I, I One disclaimer to this list, and I probably should open with this, didn't get a chance to watch JV on Cohen, uh, the Alabama he transfer to Miami. So I did not he get to see him anything. just for some context. Tate Ratledge, though, number five. Yeah, you didn't miss anything not watching uh, JV on Cohen. I did oh, not nice. get that. See, this is the weirdest part too with the with the with the guards is that yeah. I we didn't or, or what's the better way to put this? There there are so many different guys that I think could have been watched during this week, and there's just yes. not a like I feel like a good grouping that like everybody is talking about. It feels right. really 
really random, but I mean, Georgia Jumbled. is just jumbled yeah. stockpiling offensive line talent. I'm going to go with a bit of a, um, an unexpected one here. You thought that this guy was a tackle, but I ended up feeling he's more of a guard. I think he could play either position, but Kieran Amadeji from Yale, who was uh, highlighted as a possible senior bowl guy. I uh, absolutely see it. I think that uh, Amadeji, I'm hoping I'm pronouncing that correctly. Apologies if I'm not. You, he was on the pod, so we have that. We have the interview yeah, that's going to drop. It soon. is. Wait, let, let me look at his last name right now because it's, it's pronounced exactly the way oh, so it it's looks. A, um, it's Amadeji, then I would assume. But my thing with him is that I just his his angles definitely need some refinement and some cleaning up. But when I watch him, I see all the athletic traits. He's got really yeah. light, easy feet. I love the leg drive. I love the strong base that he plays with in pass protection and as a run blocker. Man, like I, I, this is just one of those guys coming from an Ivy League school where you can tell he was a really green recruit and he was just a really smart, well-rounded kid that took the opportunity to go play at Yale and he has developed very, very quickly. I, I'm a yeah. really, really big fan of this kid and I wonder if anyone thinks I'm crazy for putting him here, but you know, I don't care. I put him at number four. It's not crazy. It's just about where you think that he fits best. I think that he is right. a tackle that could play guard. So, I mean, if you if you if you like a better guard, there's no pushback in that regard. He does have over 36 inch arms, though. So, I think a lot of guys are going to look at him and be like, "You're a tackle first, and then if you're not, then move him to guard." But I love he is long, controlled, and powerful, and I love mm. those three things about him. I mean, that kid. No one can get into his frame, even if you can. He's still able to press and be able to extend in the run game. Very, I don't know if his foot quickness is great, but what he is is he's very patient and he's very controlled mm. and he trusts his feet, which I think is absolutely fantastic. So Karan Amagaji is how you pronounce it. Amagaji. A, Amagaji. It's Karan, not Kieran. It's Karan. Yeah. Wow. Karan. I. Where it's a, it's a <laughs> I put you that. Actually, I'm so sorry, you, Karan. <laughs> God, no, you, wow, that you, wasn't even close. You, well, well, you know, uh, the, you know that awkward moment when you first get someone in for an interview and you have to ask yeah. how they pronounce their name. I said, I opened up by saying, "Hey, Karan, how are you?" And then he's like, "It's Karan." I'm like, "See, okay. that's <laughs> why. That's why whenever yeah. I do it, I say like, hey, how's it going, man?'" And then I go like, "I just yeah. want to double check. I like, can you just pronounce yeah. your name for me? I want to make sure it's right." That's that's why I always try to play it safe because I. I made that mistake once with a head coach, and I will yeah. never <laughs> let that happen again. Oh, man. But Abagaji, Joe, he, I, I think I said this in Slack, or maybe I said this on Twitter. I can't remember where I said this. But this is my pick to be the first FCS player off the board in yeah, general. I, I think that he could be a – I think he could be a day two pick if he has a strong final year and he goes to Senior Bowl and has a good week. I think that's very Absolutely. possible. Who's your number four? Number four for me, Zach Zinner from University of Michigan. Oh. I like Zach, man. I, I think that he – I wasn't – I'm not bullish on him. I just think that he's a very good, solid football player. I mean, we talked about him. He is potential late day two player, probably more early day three player for me personally right now because I think there are some limitations to him. I think that he is not the easiest mover of all time, and I don't think he's incredibly flexible, but I think he's fine from a movement perspective. He's fine. He's requisite as far as being a NFL player on a roster. But he plays strong, plays physical, and he's he's just had very consistent film over the last two years at the University of Michigan. So he's a little bit lower on my list just because I don't see massive upside. I don't see a special football player. I just see solid. I think at worst – He's just a very good backup interior offensive lineman. I think at the best, though, I think that he is just, you know, just a solid to below average starter, which nothing wrong with that. It's still mm -hmm. a good thing, but I just, I don't think that his upside is immense as of right now. I have him placed at number two. Uh, no. I really, 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 really like Zach Center. Uh, not to the point where I think he's has that potential to be a high level starter, but I, I think you hit the nail on the head there. I think that, and this is probably more reflective on, on me being not very excited about this guard class. I yeah. think at the very minimum, he can be a, a mid-level starter to a low level starter. Mm -hmm. As we talked about on his scouting report episode, I just think that he is such a savvy veteran yes. player, good technique, yes. really good angles. He is not an overwhelming bendy athlete. And he's, he certainly has, 
issues with his flexibility and playing lower that needs improvement. And it's like, how much more flexible is this guy going to get? But I think with his strength and his angles, his technique, everything just checks every box, which is why he'll never get to that all pro level. I don't know if I'm, if I can sit here and say that this is, is going to be an all pro player, but I think that he will be a starter in the NFL for a period of time. And he'll be a key important contributor on an offensive line in the NFL. And that's, that's why I'm 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 high on Zach Sinter as my number two. I know now who your number one and number three are now with the process of elimination. I think I think I know now. I think I know now. I like Zach though, man. He's a good player, mm. good football player. Well, I'll give you my number three. My number three is Christian Haynes. I know it. I know it. Yep. I got it. Yep. We had met with an agent who told us that he's probably he should probably play center, and I see that. But dude, he's got the mentality of a guard. He has got yes. he is a, an aggressive powerful mean dude i love his get off his get off was the one of the first things that stood out to me great great base as a run blocker moves pretty well in space because he's smaller a little bit more compact but Mm -hmm. dude the pop that he has behind his hands and his pads is fantastic my man is laying some heat with some of the (laughs) the power that he brings behind his hands and his pads so that for me was really just an easy one put him at number three if he moves to center, I think he'll be fine. But yeah. the mentality and the way that he plays the position, he feels more like a guard. He he just missed my list, Joe. Literally, I'm looking at my list. I had 10 guys ranked, and he was number six on my list. So just narrowly, okay. Tate Ratledge, I just went with the size a little bit there. Because like you said, Christian Haynes is not the biggest guy in the world. Six foot two and seven eighths, so right around six foot three, three hundred twelve pounds. So I definitely understand why some people might project him at center. To your point, but I agree. I think the mentality is a guard. I like the displacement power. I love the effort as a blocker. I think that he plays incredibly hard, and he's a sufficient, not special, but sufficient mover in space. So I think that he has the potential to develop into a good player on the NFL level. I think that. Why guys like Ratledge and Zinter edged him out to be in four and five for me is that I think that the size profiles that both those guys bring maybe up their floor a little bit higher than maybe what a, a Christian Haynes brings to the table. But I would argue that Christian Haynes has higher upside than both those football players. So I like Christian Haynes yeah. a ton. Almost got into number five, like I said. I think that if you guys haven't watched UConn last year, because Jim Moore Jr. actually did a really nice job in year one. There's a lot of talent on that team, Joe. Like, it's not a bad random. roster, man. It's a randomly solid players on that team. Christian Haynes, Eric Watts, uh, Mike, Michael Williams-Dixon, who is a who's a safety for them. Like, they have some guys on that team. So, Christian Haynes is a good football player, man. I like the I like the inclusion there. That was number three for you, right? You said three? Yeah, who was your number three? Donovan Jackson was my number three. So, I guess I'm moving on. Oh, yes. Yeah, give you your number two then. Number two, who I know is number one on your list, it's Cooper Beebe out of Kansas State. Ooh, spicy. I, hey, man, I really like Cooper Beebe. I do. We're talking about a 6'3 plus, 200, 200, 331-pound behemoth of a man. We're talking about displacement power. You want to talk about strong hands, and you want to talk about two years of starting experience at left tackle for Kansas State before moving to guard last year. Very patient, very controlled handles movement on front exceptionally well. This is just a really good player, man. Like he's going to be a a solid to good starter in the NFL for years and years to come. Is he going to be a perennial pro bowler? Not sure about that one, but I think at worst, he's just going to be a good solid starting offensive Mm. guard for the next eight to 10 years. Like that's what I see with, with a guy like Cooper BB. Yeah. I I don't know if he ever gets to that Zach Martin level and he's not the most explosive athlete, as we said, when we broke him down, but (laughs) Solid. You watch him on film, and I just don't like see any holes with his game, really, except for like a maybe a lack of flexibility and not being a an A plus athlete. The guy mm-hmm. just moves, you know, and and has the power that you need, as well as just consistent angles. Like you don't see a guy; he's very rarely out of position when he's blocking. And the big thing too is keeping eyes in front of him. I talked about that on on that scouting report episode where I value. Offensive linemen who just know how and have the instincts to keep interior guys or edge rushers in front of them. And, and Cooper Beebe does that perfectly, it feels like, on every single rep. So, yeah, I, I he's my number one. He yes. I placed him at number one. I think that he is going to be a first-round pick when it's all said and done at the very end of the first round for a team that's just looking to solidify the back end of their 
uh, their offensive line and just get that young, young, young stout player to, into the mix. I don't, I don't think that he is the upside of a Chris Lindstrom, for instance, that's become one of the best guards in the NFL for the Atlanta Falcons when he came out of BC. But he gives me Chris Lindstrom vibes in the sense that he's going to be like the least sexy late first round pick of all time. And I know Lindstrom went even higher than like late first round, but I, I can imagine Cooper Beebe being like the 28th overall selection by this team that's going to try to make a Super Bowl run next year. And everyone's yeah. like, oh, a guard in the first round. It's going to be like, it's a good player for years and years to come. I mean, like you hit on it, right? You hit on it. So right. I'm there with Cooper Beebe, man. Good football player. There's no doubt about that. Who's your number one? Troy Fontana, who is a offensive I knew that was out coming. of Washington. Joe. I didn't get to him. I like I, I you texted me about him. I was trying to yeah. make time to get to him, didn't get to him, and I regret not it's getting right, to him. All right, man. I, I think you should go watch him. And it's obviously not for this summer scouting portion, but like I watched him for the first time. Well, I, I watched a little bit of him a few months ago because I actually like the right tackle, Roger Rosengarten. He was actually on my top five list for offensive tackles when we did that. But I hadn't really watched Troy in depth because he's a 6'3 and a half, 319 pound pounder who's playing offensive tackle. He's playing left tackle for Washington, which is just weird. He was the one that replaced Jackson Kirkland at left tackle last mm. year. And last year was his first year of starting spot he is clearly going to move inside because i don't think his length is great i think it's good for a guard but i don't think it's good for an offensive tackle but man it's the best athlete on the list i mean just point blank period to it like he moves exceptionally well second level outside zone heavy scheme he moves laterally he's got loose hips he's in ex i mean like literally man he looks like a former tight ends when you're talking mm. about him in space like he is just that functionally good of a mover. And I think he's got some surprising pops in it, pop in his hands, man. For a guy that was a first year starter, I thought his nuance in his hands was actually really dang good. This is a player, Joe, where you ask me which offensive guard that I'm projecting could potentially be a, a more surefire first round pick. I think it's Troy Fontana, man. I think that I look at this kid and I'm like, if I was a late first round pick right now, I would draft this kid. I would, I think this is a top 50 football player. I think that he is going to be a plus starter in the NFL I'm not ready to call him elite so I'm not ready to call him a blue chipper because he's not that at this moment but if I'm talking about a six three and a half 320 pound kid who moves as well as he does and has the flashes that he has and has the experience at left tackle which tells me he's also going to have the control and the patience to play offense to, uh, to, to transition inside a guard as, as a pass protector I think this kid's got all the goods man I'm really high on this kid out of Washington Talk about my, we talk about Michael Penix and these wide receivers all the time. They have one of the best offensive lines in college football, yeah. too. And Troy yeah. Fontana is a big part of that one. I'm kicking myself for not having watched him. I'm going to go watch him and see if he if he cracks my list and makes it into my just my general top 50. Uh, folks, thank you for tuning in. Appreciate you taking the time. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. Drop a comment below. We'll be back. Enjoy the rest of your week.